Hey, what's up guys? Today I just wanted to do a quick video and talk about a scam that seems to be getting more and more frequent targeting photographers. Now the scam that I'm going to talk about, it's nothing new. It's been around for quite a while. It's actually a revision on an old Craigslist scam. But because I know a lot of you folks that watch my videos are not necessarily new photographers, but are new into the business end of photography, I feared it'd be a good video to put out there because I've been getting contacted by people who are trying to run this scam on me a couple of times a week lately. Some of them actually initially come across as being somewhat credible, but I think I've kind of figured out a way to, to weed out the good ones from the bad ones. So the basic scam is that the person who's trying to scam you will try to overpay you for an item or overpay you for a service. They also do this at times when they're purchasing things like camera gear, but and then they try to double get over on you because they try to get you to give them the camera gear and cash back as well. So basically the lesson to take away from this video is going to be don't ever give anybody cash back, period. But I'm going to explain the scam to you guys anyways. So it used to be on Craigslist what they would do is they would pay with a check and you would accept the check and they would overpay for whatever reason. They made a mistake and wrote the check for too large or they needed you to pay a shipping company. There was always some excuse for overpaying. And what would happen is they would tell you go ahead and take the check, go deposit in your account. Well, here in the United States anyways, the banks only have a certain amount of time from when you deposit the check until they have to release the funds to you, even if the check hasn't actually cleared the other bank. And these scammers would take advantage of this and they would have stolen checks, counterfeit checks, whatever the case may be. And once the check cleared people's bank accounts, they assumed that that meant that the check was good. They would withdraw the money, send the money to the person or to the third party, whatever needed to be done and then a couple days, a couple weeks later, sometimes the bank would notify the victim that the check was in fact not valid. Well, the victim is left holding the bag. The bank now holds you responsible for all the money you withdrew from your account. And so it was a big problem a few years back that people were getting scammed by this on Craigslist right and left. Well, now they've moved to doing credit cards because you have things like Square that allow the average person to process credit cards and they're targeting a lot of photographers, or at least they're targeting me. I can't say how many other photographers. So basically what happens is, is typically it starts with a text message. And I get a lot of text messages for customers, so that's not unusual that the first contact with a customer comes via text message. I get a lot of direct messages on Instagram and Facebook. Um, very, very few people actually pick up a phone and call me for the first contact. So the fact that they're contacting me by text message isn't a big deal. But there's a couple of red flags in the messages, and I'll point those out here in just a second. So usually the first contact starts with something like this. Hello, I am Calvin. How are you doing today? I would like to know if you do photography for a reunion event, and do you accept credit card for payment? And are you the owner? Now, there's a couple of red flags in here, and it took me a couple of these scammers to, before I realized it. But typically whenever a person contacts me for the first time, if I don't personally know them, they will give me a little bit of a backstory. They will tell me, you photographed my niece, Caitlin, or you know my cousin, Joe, um, you know for whatever event, and I really liked your work, and I would like to hire you. That's typically the way that it starts. So give me a little bit of a backstory. And even if they don't necessarily know somebody who I photographed, they'll say, I came across your website, um, I really like your work, and then they go from there. And in these scammers situations, they never reference anything. They just simply jump right into it. So that's the first indication that, that it's bad. And what's frustrating is, is I've had some of these where it's went back and forth for several messages. This one is probably one of the longer ones before I was finally able to determine that this guy was in fact scamming me or trying to scam me. So the way that I deal with this, because I don't want to jump the gun with this because it is a potential client. Maybe it is legitimate that he just wants to know off the top. Um, I will tell you that for my portrait clients and my event clients that are scheduling a month down the road, I don't think I've ever had a legitimate one ask me in advance if I took credit cards because they have plenty of time to go to the bank to get cash, to get a check, to do whatever they want, that they don't have to use a credit card. But I, I do accept them, and mostly I accept them because we accept a lot of them through our high-volume photography business. So I also use them for my portrait business as well, or use the credit card reader for my portrait business as well. But I just I don't remember any client ever asking me a, a month or two months in advance if I accepted credit cards. So typically what happens after that is I start asking kind of the fundamental details. Typically in the first contact, they don't give you a date that they are looking for for the event, which is another red flag. 
Um, some of them have told me, well, what day are you available next month? Which, if you're having a family reunion or a high school reunion, you're not going to schedule a date based around your photographer. You're going to find a photographer that fits the date. So that's another indication. But in this particular one, you know, I sent them a couple of questions. Is it a family reunion? Is it a um, high school reunion? What's the deal? All of these scammers come back with very specific requests regarding prints that they want to purchase. And typically, a lot of these that I'm getting, it's that they're having a family reunion and they want me to photograph each family in addition to overall event photos. And they want 11 by 14 of each family. Sometimes they'll say they want it in canvas, whatever the case may be, and they want to know how much all this is going to be. And so it can get very tedious with this back and forth and it can get frustrating because it's a waste of my time whenever I find out they're a scammer. So the way that I've kind of learned to work around this is um, a couple of things. One is, is I ask them what the, where the venue that they're having the event at. And typically they will ignore this question because they don't have a venue. And at that point you pretty much know it's a scam. But I will ask them if they continue to respond and not give me the venue location, I will continue to ask. In this guy's particular case, he gave me a venue location and I called the venue to confirm that there was a party scheduled for that day and there wasn't. And so at that point I knew that it was a scam. And right at the same time as I pretty much had established and knew that it was a scam because there was no reunion scheduled for where he said and the date, um, he sent me another message and asked me for a favor. And just playing along, I went ahead and said, you know, what's the favor? And he told me that Basically, the wedding, or excuse me, the event coordinator did not have the ability to process credit cards, so he wanted me to overcharge him and then pay the party planner on his behalf because he could only pay by credit card and for me to keep some extra money out of the deal for myself. Now, what's going to happen is, is that credit card transaction is going to come back to be fraudulent at some point, and I'm going to be left holding the bag on it. But this was very frustrating because I kept having this back and forth cat and mouse game where I pretty much knew that these people were scammers, but I didn't want to call them out because you don't want to offend somebody if they are legitimate because some of these guys did kind of sound legitimate. So essentially what I started doing now is if they mention credit card payment in the first message that they send me, I'll reply to them and I will tell them essentially this. Tell them I'm going to verify their uh, reservations and then I tell them, yes, I do accept credit card payments. And then I basically explain to them that I apologize that I'm looking down at my phone. I'm reading the text messages I tell you, and I'm also going to show it here on the screen. Uh, but I basically tell them, you know, due to the number of scams involving credit cards, under no circumstances will any overpayment be accepted or will I make any payment to any third party. Basically, I will not remove any money from my accounts for any reason. Any refunds will be credited credited back to the card that was originally used, absolutely no exceptions. And then, you know, I apologize to them that, you know, that I've had to include this in there. I'm not trying to offend anybody, but that I am getting contacted so frequently regarding the scam that I'm just trying to cover my bases, protect myself, and hopefully uh, eliminate the back and forth with the scammers. And then I also do throw in there that, you know, my background is in law enforcement and uh, I did work fraud for a few years. I hated it. It was the most boring job in the world. But, and that pretty much stops the messages at that point. Actually, it does. I've never had anybody respond back to me at that point. So I don't know if I'm offending people or if the scammers just don't want to mess around with it anymore. But I've gotten to where once they mention credit card payment, if, they, if it's in the very first message, uh, then I just send them something along those lines right back. And I think I've the last three or four people that I've had that have messaged me regarding this, after I've sent that message, I don't hear back from them. So, But it saves me a lot of time because that in that first message with Calvin, I mean, we literally went back and forth for, you know, multiple messages. It took me, you know, off and on half of the morning while I was photographing a track meet of, Every time I had a break, I was answering a question or asking him a question. And it was just so frustrating in the end to have put forth that much effort just to find out that it was a scam. So like I said, ultimately what it boils down to, whether you're selling camera gear or anything else online or you're accepting services, you know, it's okay to accept checks and, and PayPal and all of that stuff. But under no circumstances do you provide them with any cash back. Uh, from the account, whether they made a mistake or whatever the case may be, you can tell them I'll cancel the check, you can reissue it, whatever you want to do, but I'm not going to give you any cash back. And even, you know, when you aren't giving them cash back, if you are providing them with something like, let's say that you're selling a camera body, um, I would be very reluctant to accept anything other than cash for where you're actually providing them with a physical item. 
because you don't know if it's going to be good or bad. And as far as the photography services, I don't mind taking the check or the credit card payment because I'm going to hang on to the images until that payment, I'm comfortable that that payment is legitimate. It's not a false, you know, fraudulent card or whatever the case may be. Um, because they're not going to get the images right at the end of the event anyways. And even if they do, then I've got pictures of the guy who had the stolen credit card to begin with. So, you know, it's going to be pretty easy to catch them. There's nothing wrong with taking credit cards or checks. You've just got to be cautious and, and be diligent in not getting ripped off. So hopefully that helps you guys out and hopefully nobody does get ripped off with this scam. And, you know, if you guys do know other photographers, try to spread the word because I don't know that this is a new scam to photography. I think I got my first message about this about eight or nine months ago, but I was getting, I had only gotten, I don't know, maybe two or three uh, for about six months. And then this last, this last two months, it's kind of been increasing to the point that, like I said, now I'm getting like two, maybe three messages a week that are like this. So um, obviously the scam is spread and uh, I just don't want to see anybody get ripped off. So I hope that helps you guys out. If you guys have any questions about this scam or any other scam, unfortunately, I do know quite a bit about scams. Leave me a comment below, or if you guys know of a new scam, you know, let it, let everybody else know because these guys, the, the interesting thing about a lot of these criminals is, is some of these guys are actually really smart. If they applied themselves to something productive, they could do amazing things. But um, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.